Hello everybody, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. So I did just get home from my study abroad semester in London and I just acquired so much information, learned so much about the city and just kind of like the whole experience. Just wanted to share everything that I could with you guys. Hopefully this is helpful. And I also am excited because I have a bunch of clips and stuff to kind of include throughout the video to sort of show you my personal experience. So let's go. I feel like a lot of this stuff is applicable if you're studying in other countries. Some of this stuff is also more specific to London. So just a little heads up. It's going to be a pretty comprehensive video. So I'm going to put timestamps down below so you can kind of just click around for whatever information you're looking for. First up we're going to talk about the prep and kind of like just things to do before going. SIM cards. So I had no idea what I was supposed to do about my phone and like making sure that I had cellular data going over there. And so basically what you need to do for a SIM card, take off your case, there's like a little thing right here, use a paper clip, pop it out and then you put in a new international SIM card. From there you can purchase a plan that has a certain amount of like minutes or gigabytes of data or text messages or kind of whatever you want. When I landed in London, I just kept my phone on airplane mode and only used the Wi-Fi at the airport and then at my flat. Then the next day that I had that was free, I went to Vodafone, which is just like a brick and mortar building They're all over London. I went there, I kind of explained my situation. I was able to purchase a plan and SIM card from them. Pretty sure what I got, I think it was like 15 gigabytes of data a month and it would work all over Europe. I ended up going to Edinburgh, Prague, and Malaga and all of them was totally fine with the service and data. I number one thing about getting a new SIM card in another country is making sure that your phone is unlocked. So you're gonna have to call whatever your phone carrier is. So mine is Verizon. Call them and just make sure that your phone's unlocked. Otherwise it won't be able to take new SIM cards and that could kind of cause a problem. But I would definitely recommend getting a SIM card over any sort of international plan because it's definitely gonna be cheaper. If you're going to get a SIM card, make sure that someone at home is able to kind of like lock your cell phone number so you can save that number for when you come back as well as you're not getting charged for that number. The next tip is just to save as much money as you possibly can. Everyone that I talked to would kind of like set out a budget and then ended up running out of money towards the end. So it's just very important if you're working a lot right before you go or you just have like some sort of saving plan set up because you are gonna end up spending more money than you think just on little things that you forget about or don't think about. And then kind of going along with that, make sure that you have some sort of budget or way to sort of track your expenses. I know some people have used like Excel spreadsheets. I have no idea how to do that to be completely honest. It's kind of confusing to me. So I just ended up doing it on, like I said, on notes. But honestly, whatever works, it's just very important to be cautious about how much money you're spending make sure that you have some sort of debit card or credit card or something that has no international transaction fees because you will definitely get caught when i first got there before i got my new credit card my debit card had like a one percent or two percent transaction fee for foreign transactions which definitely was like really an unnecessary expense that i had to pay so just be conscious of that and make sure you figure that all out with your bank before you go now we're kind of moving on to packing. I think I did a good job packing. There's definitely some things I would have changed. So I'm kind of gonna share that with you. The number one thing is just, just pack light. I think I did a good job not bringing too many clothes. I brought three pairs of shoes. I brought boots, running shoes, and then like my everyday sneaker. So I'm really glad that I brought boots because it did get kind of cold as well as sometimes it was raining and I wouldn't want to wear sneakers. But I feel like that's like kind of as many shoes as you need. I really don't think you need any more. Just to give you kind of like a really quick rundown of the clothes that I packed, I packed a packable like kind of compact winter coat, packed a raincoat. I packed one hoodie, two crew necks, which I definitely should have brought more hoodies. I wish I brought one or two more. I brought two pairs of running shorts, two pairs of leggings, a pair of yoga pants, three pairs of jeans, pair of leather pants, two like other like fun going out pants, um, probably like five tank tops, four t-shirts, some long sleeves, um, my leather blazer, which was my most worn piece of clothing that I brought, boxer comfy shorts, some pajama pants, a pair of sweatpants. I brought one dress that I ended up wearing twice for like a nicer occasion slash like events we went to, which I'm glad that I did. I actually made a whole video about my packing for London experience. So you guys can watch that just for some ideas. So I really tried to have like a capsule wardrobe. So once you've kind of packed up your clothes and shoes, as far as like toiletries goes, I did bring some of these like little kind of bottles. I did end up bringing like shaving cream and razors. Honestly, unless you have very specific products that you use, more than likely you can either find those exact products at a boots which is like a pharmacy or you buy like regular ones from the grocery store i just think that like they're heavy and they take up quite a bit of space and they're not really necessary i definitely should have left like the shaving cream and stuff at home because i could so easily have bought it there and it really wouldn't have been that much more expensive you will buy a lot of clothes i think i came home with like 25 new pieces of clothing the majority of clothes that i brought home i paid less than like two pounds for so they weren't super expensive but they definitely were heavy so i did have to buy another bag when i was coming home most cities in europe but especially london it's a walkable 
city so making sure that you have really good walking or running shoes being from the suburbs i just did not have the opportunity to walk as much but i walked like seven miles a day every day so just have good shoes Next up is my favorite transportation. The London public transportation is absolutely insane. You've got the buses, you have the tube, and then you have the bikes. I did not touch the bikes simply because I can barely cross the street. There's no way that I'd be able to navigate a bike along the streets. I was lucky enough that my school actually gave all the students Oyster cards. They're basically like cards with like unlimited swipes to use the tube or the buses. So that was honestly so clutch because I think it's about like $2.50 to $3 for every tube or bus ride within a certain zone. As for navigating, I just stuck with using Google Maps and I found it to be quite helpful. I know a lot of people use City Mapper. They're honestly so nice because you can just put in wherever you're going and then it'll tell you whether the bus the tube is faster how long the tube ride will be how many stops it'll be things like that i don't know if this is like dumb that i'm explaining it to you again i am from the suburbs so i had no concept of like really any public transportation systems so the way that the tube is there's a bunch of different lines so you've got the northern line district central hammersmith and city um the circle line basically they're all just different circle is super nice because obviously it's a giant circle so it hits the majority of the main stops central is again it's north of the thames and it just kind of again hits all the main stops due to covid the tube closed at midnight while i was there which honestly was a little bit of an inconvenience i have to say because there were some very long late night bus rides we ended up having to take there's a strike that was going on with the tube while i was there and so i'm not sure if at some point it'll open back up to 24 hours or certain lines will run 24 hours um then you're probably gonna have to take the bus or an uber or something if you're out past midnight the buses were honestly really nice and towards the end of my time there i enjoyed them more than the tube just because you can just hop on it can also just take you more places and it's not necessarily faster but you do get kind of like a little tour of the city the way that the bus stops work there's usually one on either side each of them will have a name of like whatever the street is and then it will have a little letter next to it but so you want to make sure that you're going to the right stop on google maps it says which stop you're supposed to be at i've had this problem before where we've gotten on technically the right stop but it was going the wrong way so you just have to be very cautious of that and pay attention if you don't end up getting any sort of oyster card or anything like that you can just pay as you go if you have a card that has one of those little like the three lines I mean, you can just tap your card or i think it works for like apple pay if you just have any sort of like card on your phone but it's nice to know that you don't have to like buy a ticket or anything like that you can just tap in and out um and it works the same next up is safety and i just want to say that like overwhelmingly my time there i felt safe i definitely was in a very nice area so i don't want to like discount that i was in east london it was just like a pretty busy area so it wasn't like i was concerned about like walking alone and like no one was near me just kind of pay attention to your surroundings stay in well-lit areas usually if i was walking somewhere by myself i would just try and stay on like main streets or just take a little bit longer to kind of go on streets that were like more well-lit or more main areas and then of course just like when you can walk with a buddy i will say there were quite a few times at all hours that i'd be walking by myself but again like just make sure that you're aware and cautious and also one thing that was a comfort to me was knowing that like there's buses that are running 24 7. i could easily just hop on a bus if i felt safe and didn't feel like walking home i shared my location with my roommate and one of my friends just so they knew where i was and just like if anything was weird i wasn't texting back they would know where i was so that's just another safety precaution in the uk things like pepper spray mace whatever are illegal just like so you know you can't have any pepper spray or anything like that which is stupid in my opinion so next up is shopping and i kind of made a comprehensive list of like where to get all the necessities that you might need because all of a sudden i'm in need of a glue stick for my design class and i'm like okay well i know they don't have michaels here so what am i supposed to do first up for grocery shopping my number one recommendation if you're on a budget is to grocery shop at either lytle or aldi they are really 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 inexpensive and they're unfortunately not really in central london you kind of have to it's a bit of a hike to get to them even from where i was in east london it was at least like 25 30 minutes to get there which is fine but then when you're coming back with all of your groceries and you have a thing of eggs in your bag and you set the eggs down to wait for the bus and the eggs crack and then everything in your bag gets really like covered in egg yolk and kind of smells like it can be kind of a long journey so just keeping that in mind so a lot of things are under a pound and just they have a great selection if there are no Lidl or aldi's close or you're just looking for something else tesco and sainsbury are both great where I was, they just had like the smaller ones, but they're quite nice. They're open pretty late. I did the majority of my shopping at Tesco just because it was a two minute walk away from my flat. I would say Tesco has decent prices, definitely get deals. I'd recommend signing up for a Tesco club card because you can save a lot 
on certain things with whatever like the weekly deals are I ended up getting a lot of like my produce and then like i'd buy chicken stuff from there and then like Lidl and aldi i would get more like snack stuff or frozen meals and then waitress i would say is the equivalent of like whole foods say so try to avoid waitress just because it's not very cheap or affordable so my roommate and i shared a kitchen and there's just certain things that we were supplied with cutting board knife potato peeler and some pots and then certain things we were not supplied with such as pans um spatula tongs things like that so i ended up going to poundland which is literally just like a dollar tree and getting a lot of utensils and like extra forks knives spoons and it was just nice to not spend a lot a lot of money on it like when you're getting to a new country and you're trying to set up your life you're kind of just like running around trying to get whatever you need and not really worrying about price so poundland i definitely recommend i have everything if you're looking for a notebook if you're looking for any sort of like cleaning supplies if you're looking for cheap snacks if you're looking for hair ties or shaving cream or conditioner or whatever go to poundland I got a bunch of organizers there too for like just my desk and things like that I would just say take advantage of that because you don't want to be spending a bunch of money on stuff that you're probably gonna have to end up just donating anyway and then if you can't find certain things at Poundland or they're just more expensive I would recommend going to either TK Maxx or Primark they're both pretty inexpensive and they both have a decent selection of kind of like home good things so if you need like a bath mat or hand towels a shower towel something like that you could easily find it there that you probably wouldn't find at Poundland if you're looking for the equivalent of like a CVS or Walgreens or some sort of drugstore, Boots is the way to go. It is kind of overpriced, I found, but they do have some good deals and they're pretty much on every single street ever, so they're really easy to find and that's where you would get any sort of like medicine. I got my bleach stuff there, but if you're looking for some sort of like pharmacy, go to Boots. So then kind of going back to shopping, charity shops are kind of the equivalent of thrift stores in the US. Charity shops, they don't have a great selection and they're quite small. So it's like a lot of more like business casual type clothes than actual like trendy clothes. If you're looking for stuff like that, you're gonna have to go to vintage markets. And there are some cool street vendors and like flea market type things on Brick Lane on Sundays, as well as just like on a lot of major streets on the weekend, there's a ton of vendors with like clothes, souvenirs, stuff like that. Majority of them are wholesale stuff like not secondhand at all but you are supporting the individual vendors so i guess it's a fine alternative so the last like month or two of being in london i found out about car boot sales which are basically like giant yard sales or flea markets that are held either on saturdays or sundays typically it's like in school parking lots so i went to the battersea boot sale the kilburn boot sale and then the princess may or like london car boot sale as it's titled they were super fun so basically how it works they usually open at like seven or eight and you have to pay five pounds to get in once it hits like 10 30 11 then if you enter any time after that you only have to pay a pound which is what we did you pay to get in and then there's just a bunch of different vendors just selling a bunch of stuff from their car i ended up finding this huge duffel bag that i use as my second piece of luggage when coming home it was five pounds which i feel like was a good deal like i said i also found a bunch of clothes and things like that that are relatively inexpensive and you do need cash they don't accept cards so make sure you take out some cash and have some coins and stuff ready they have like phone cases shoes and clothes and so much like home decor and have like home appliances there's just so many different things so like if you support buying stuff secondhand i recommend going there because it's just so much better than buying it new especially if you're just going to redonate it again I'd recommend signing up for a UK Amazon account because when you sign up, if you're a student, you can get, I think it's six months free. But I'd recommend doing that just because there's certain things that you're not going to be able to find there that you want to ship. I ended up randomly buying this Woboba ball, which is like a ball that bounced on water before we went to the beach. Also bought some of these masks. I couldn't find them at Boots, but I needed them for the flight. So just like random things like that are nice to have. So moving on to food, this was something that I did not expect, but I enjoyed cooking so much while I was there. I had my own little kitchen in my flat and I did not have any sort of meal plan. I don't know if that's normal for study abroad programs. So we were all forced to fend for ourselves and a lot of people ended up just eating out a bunch, which is totally fine and understandable because it is kind of a lot of work to like grocery shop and cook for yourself. I just ended up really enjoying it. And also I despise spending money and London is so expensive. My main meals that I made were pasta, sandwiches, wraps, stir fry pancakes bagel sandwiches the thing that i found with food in the uk and i guess i'll say london is really that was the only thing i had experience with groceries i found to be cheaper than the u.s but in smaller quantities and they expire faster i feel like it's genuinely because they don't use as many preservatives as they do in the u.s so the food is just like fresher it is kind of difficult because I buy bread and then three days later it's expired and moldy so you just have to be conscious of that tesco is a three pound meal deal where you can get a drink snack and a sandwich for three pounds and a lot of people took advantage of it last thing pertaining to food is the prep membership 
I don't drink coffee, so I really didn't have to worry about it. But man, for the first like two weeks of being in London, that was all anyone talked about. I don't even know how much it is, but basically you can pay per month for a subscription to Pret, the coffee store that's kind of pretty much everywhere in London, like at every single corner. And then you could get like basically all you can drink coffee. I don't really get it, but a lot of people took advantage of it. And if coffee is something that you drink and like a pretty big expense for you, I guess that's a good deal. All right, so now for the fun part. I compiled a list of my favorite things to do in London. Nightlife, during the day, museums, things like that. All this is like my own opinions and observations, so you guys might disagree if you've been or whatever, but I would say that like the nightlife, I kind of split up into three different categories. So bars, clubs, and pubs. So first up, bars, I feel like kind of self-explanatory. Music is like a wider sort of bar selection. An example would be Simmons, but I've seen them everywhere throughout London. There was one that was probably a 30 second walk from my flat. There's one in Soho. I would say nine times out of 10, the bars have free entry. So if you're not looking to spend a lot of money, then going there would be fun. Pubs are like more focused on beer, more boring. I don't know anything about beer, so I really am like just making stuff up. There was one bar that had a bunch of dartboards and that's where we went. It used to be every Monday night and then we kind of stopped going, but that was like definitely like more of like a pub, older demographic. It sounds so dumb the way I'm describing it, but whatever. And then the last is like clubs. So obviously like there's a bar there, but then like the main thing is like dancing, music, whatever. List of clubs that we went to. I don't know if this is at all helpful. Roxy, which I didn't love, but a lot of my friends did. So I decided to include that. Cargo, which is in Shoreditch. Egg, Heaven, Tiger Tiger, XOYO, Bolly Ballerson. Ministry of Sound, those are some clubs that I feel like have a younger age demographic. They're kind of freshers events areas, which isn't great, but I feel like that's kind of, if you're trying to like meet people that are locals, that's probably a good time to do it. I mentioned Simmons for the bars, but Bounce is a sort of bar, but it has um, ping pong and beer pong that you can play there. That's kind of like a cool thing. We did that once and it was pretty fun. We went bowling once, which was also fun. And then Swingers is a place that is like putt-putt. It's like a putt-putt bar, but it's about like, eight to 12 pounds per person for stuff like that. So my number one tip for going out to save money is to avoid buying drinks out. It's just so expensive, it's never worth it. All right, as for attractions last things to do, I just made a list. The London Eye, which my school actually organized like a trip for students to go in the London Eye that they paid for. That's the only way that I would do it because I think it's like 20 to 30 pounds to do it yourself. So not something that I'd personally pay, but it does have some pretty cool views. Camden Town, which is a cool area that the canal running through it and then a bunch of like shops. And it's like it has kind of like a unique edgier feel to it. Then Brick Lane, which was super close to where I was. It's kind of near Shoreditch area. It has tons and tons of vintage shops. It's a really cool place to people watch because everyone there has just like crazy crazy cool outfits. They're also pretty well known for their Indian food and Brook Lane is also the location of the chicken shop where Jack Harlow and Amelia did their chicken shop date. So fun fact. Portobello Market is pretty cool. I've been there on a Saturday and a Sunday, both of which have a lot of like food vendors and vintage vendors and stuff like that. And it's just like a cool street to walk. And then from there we walked through kind of like to Notting Hill. Tower Bridge, I feel like you have to go at least once if you're in London. It was really, really close to where I went to class. So I was there a lot. Now for museums, I made a list of ones that had free entry. British Museum and National History Museum both have free entry. I've not been to either one of those. I didn't really have any interest in them personally. Tate Modern, I wasn't my favorite ever. I feel like I don't have like great appreciation for art, so I just kind of tend to avoid museums like that because I just don't really get it. The V&A Museum was probably one of my favorites that I went to. Super cool. We went kind of near closing, so we didn't have time to explore like everything. But it was really interesting and I enjoyed it a lot. The Imperial War Museum I went to as well, which is free entry, and I thought it was really interesting. Definitely it's like heavy and sad, but I think it's very important to go see. The Design Museum I went to as well, which I thought was quite cool. There was this exhibit that I wish I paid to go see. I didn't pay for it and I regret it. It was called like Wasteland. It was about kind of like sustainability and waste and things like that. Moving on to parks. This is one of my favorite topics because I made it my goal to visit as many parks as I could. Hyde Park, I loved. I was there for the Winter Wonderland festival carnival thing. I didn't end up going, so I'm not a big like carnival person. I've been there day and night to kind of just see the people coming in and out, the lights, whatever. Just walking around Hyde Park is beautiful. I know one of my friends went for runs there a lot. It's just amazing. I I'm obsessed with any park there. Next up is Hampstead Heath, which is one of my personal favorites. I went there with my friends once and we played frisbee and it's just so, so huge and beautiful and all the dogs are off leash and running around and they're also well behaved and it's just 
I just loved it. Also, the first week that I was in London, my roommate and one of my friends, we went swimming in Hampstead Heath. They're known for, they have these like bathing ponds. There's like a mixed bathing pond and a men's and then a women's. We were at the mixed bathing pond and it was like 70 degrees. It was such a warm day. Everyone was at the park already and we went and you had to pay to swim there. So we ended up just going to like this different pond and just like jumping in really quickly because there were like some locals that were swimming there even though technically not supposed to but it was such a fun memory and if you're there in like the warmer months i definitely recommend going for a dip there regent park is also really cool i didn't explore it too much just kind of walked around the perimeter i didn't really go in but i know they have like a zoo the way that the parks are they just like really do a great job of kind of breaking up the city so you can't walk that far without hitting a park which is super nice brick lane park which i think is also called station park i always just called it brick lane park because it's right by like the overground and if you just cut right off a of brick lane you'll be there on thanksgiving we played football there we played frisbee a lot there and oh, i just love it so many good memories Finbury Circus Park was quite close to where I lived and it was super nice again on the warm days So many people would go out and they would just eat their lunch there I also went to Holland Park which has Kyoto Gardens, which was really pretty I went when it was like pouring rain so that was not ideal But it was definitely really pretty and it was very peaceful which was nice Then I went to Southwark Park which was it wasn't my favorite but it was definitely nice And it was pretty big and it was south of the Thames which was one of the only parks I think I visited that was south of the Thames um, Then Olympic Park which is where the 2012 olympic games were held in london i thought that was really cool and it was just fun to kind of explore and then victoria park which ended up being one of my favorites it was the last park that i visited but it had really really pretty like little pond water area it had this crazy playground with like really big slides it had this gazebo that i sat by just read for a little bit and just huge like green spaces it was just so pretty i don't know why i loved it so much but now for day trips from london if you're going to be there for a while there's definitely going to be some weekends you want to travel abroad and then other times they just kind of want to stick around in england so one of my friends and i went to eastbourne to see the seven sisters cliffs i think it was like an hour hour and a half rain ride just like pretty much straight south but it was definitely really pretty i love the town they had really good charity shops I ended up finding a pair of pants and a pair of shoes which was exciting and it was just like such a fun day it was very doable to do in a day we just left pretty early and came back like six o'clock i guess there was one weekend that a couple of my friends and i got an airbnb in hastings which is a seaside town again in england and i think it was maybe an hour and a half the most picturesque little place it was pretty cold but we ended up going for a little swim one day and then we just like had the airbnb it was cozy we cooked and it was just kind of a nice break from the city um and it's inexpensive the majority of train tickets were like 20-ish pounds so i feel like that's doable and there was also we did a school trip to stonehenge and windsor castle it's kind of like a day trip that i think was pretty cool stonehenge i found to be incredibly underwhelming i don't know i don't really know what i was expecting so i guess there's that so for out of country travel a few things i didn't realize were one if you are flying out of heathrow or stansted or lutton I think is the other one you're gonna have to pay not only for the plane ticket itself but you're gonna have to pay for transport to the airport which like sounds obvious but again from the suburbs i would just drive there and it's like 30 or so pounds round trip which is another cost that you don't really think about until you're like getting ready to book your flights ubers are not that cheap either so just being conscious of that i recommend if you can getting tickets on ryanair it's super cheap it's like reliable i feel like people say like oh it's so sketchy like, they do try and sell you perfume and like random lottery ticket during the flight which is super weird but it's safe of course and super easy and genuinely our flight was like 25 pounds if you were like me and thinking oh my gosh i'm definitely gonna take the eurostar from london to paris it'll be so easy book ahead of time because it's not cheap i definitely went in with the impression thinking it was gonna be like 50 to 75 pounds round trip for a train ticket and it ended up being 250 maybe to 300 pounds per ticket round trip all right, and last but not least, I just have some random facts. I didn't really fit into any category, but I felt would be helpful. First up is shipping to and from the U.S. is so expensive. It is like unbelievably expensive. We're talking like 50 to 100 bucks to ship something. Just don't go in with the mentality of like, oh, if I need something, I'll just get it shipped to me. It probably makes more sense to just pay to bring another checked bag than pay to have stuff shipped. Going into the trip, I definitely thought I was going to be staying in more kind of like hostel situations, although Airbnbs tended to be cheaper when you had more people, so whatever works. But I packed a microfiber towel, shower shoes, and locks for my luggage, all with the thought of like using them in hostels. So I'd recommend if you think you're going to be doing any traveling to just bring those few things because they're pretty small and compact, but they're also really helpful to have. 
make sure that you check a lot of places for student discounts because a lot of places do and if you just have your little student ID you can show it and get money off. I just can't stress this enough, London is so expensive. You need to think about it as taking the price and multiplying it by one and a half because that's pretty much how much it's going to be in US dollars. It will get you. My dumbest purchase, I bought a donut that ended up being six US dollars. Six dollars for a donut, so. You do not tip there they will usually add if you're going out to eat some sort of like service charge or something appreciated of course but not like in the u.s where the servers are getting paid 230 an hour this is super random but one of the best things that i brought was like a little like it was almost like a pill case for like each day of the week and i filled it with different spices because i knew that i was gonna have a kitchen but i know that spices can be kind of expensive and i didn't need to buy full things of all these spices so like paprika garlic powder chili powder nutmeg cinnamon like all that stuff i just put in these little containers and then i was able to season all my stuff without paying like 20 bucks total for a bunch of these spices that i was going to use like a quarter of in my time that i was there Another thing that I did not know before going there was that you need to have a prescription if you're getting melatonin in the UK. I just brought a bunch of these little things of like my melatonin, which thank goodness I did because it would have been really hard for me to get a prescription and I need melatonin to sleep. So just keep that in mind if you typically take that to bring enough for your entire duration. If you're on any sort of escalator, make sure that you are standing on the right and passing on the left. And if you're standing on the right, just make sure there's space for people to pass on the left. When you're crossing the street, this is so important. Make sure you look both ways like eight times. And one thing that I thought was really funny about London was nine times out of ten, if you look down at the ground at any sort of like crosswalk in giant letters, it'll have an arrow pointing either left or right and say look left or look right. It's super dangerous to be stepping in front of traffic not knowing where it's coming from. They have ATMs outside both Tesco's and Sainsbury's that have like free cash withdrawals. So the only thing that you're paying is whatever the dumb exchange rate is and then whatever your bank fee is, but not like an additional ATM charge, which is kind of nice to know. It's kind of obvious, but the UK does have different outlets than we do. So it's making sure that you have some sort of adapter. I know some people have like the universal adapters that work for pretty much any country. I do not, but I just got sort of like the basic ones when I was home. All right, so those were all of my tips and just things that I could think of that I feel like would be helpful when studying abroad or before studying abroad in London. Please, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask and I'd be happy to answer them to the best of my ability. But definitely you will see more footage and stuff from my time in London shortly. So I love you guys and bye.